This lecture is devoted to the second half of the proof of the Whitney embedding theorem. Indeed, we will show that if there exists an embedding from our compact manifold to a Euclidean space, then there exists another embedding into R 2m plus 1, where m is the dimension of our compact manifold. Indeed, we will see that we can reduce the dimension of the target space and that the tool that we need in order to accomplish such a task is indeed Sartre's theorem. Let us show that if M can be embedded into an included space K and K is greater than 2M plus 1, then M can be embedded into R K minus 1. Okay? So let's go. The idea of the proof is the following. Okay, we have here our embedding from M to R k okay and the idea is considering a point p in r k minus the origin and then the orthogonal projection from r k to uh, the orthogonal of the linear subspace, linear subspace generated by P, which is an R K minus one, right? This is gonna be just the orthogonal projection. So our goal in this proof is uh, showing that uh, for a good choice of P, the map uh, uh, F composed with pi is still an embedding, right? That's what we want to show. And we are going to define, in order to prove this, two aux auxiliary maps. The first one, it's going to be the map G, which is defined in M times M times R, and the target space is still RK, and that sends the point X, Y, T to T times F, X minus F, Y. If uh, F is a uh, CR embedding, this is a CR map, right? And then we are going to consider another map, H, which is defined in the tangent space of M, and the target space is our K, that sends um, a tangent vector of M at X to the differential of F at x applied to u. Let's point out that the tangent space of m is a manifold, that it's, it is a CR minus one manifold, and that the differential is also a CR minus one map, so this map over here is CR minus one. And that's the reason uh, justifying that in the statement of the Whitney embedding theorem of the version we're proven, R is greater or equal than two. Because in order to use SAR theorem, the corollary of SAR theorem that uh, we introduce, we need maps that are C1. And uh, in order to have the map, the map H uh, as a C1 map, we need R greater or equal than two. That's how it works. Okay. Uh, can we use the corollary? The corollary was that if we have a C1 map from a manifold to another manifold and the dimension of the target space 
is greater than the dimension of the source space, then the image has measure zero, okay? So in order to use such corollary, we need to guarantee that K is greater than the dimension of this uh, uh, manifold. And the dimension of that manifold is 2M plus one. And yeah, that, that condition actually holds. And uh, we need a condition here also that is K is uh, greater than the dimension of this manifold, but the dimension of the time space of M is 2M. So it also holds. It's even simpler. It's, uh, it's a less restrictive condition than the previous one. So by using the corollary, of a SAR theorem, there exists P that does not belong neither to the image of a G nor to the image of H, right? Indeed, uh, the set of points that are in the image of G union image of H is uh, measure zero set, so its complementary is dense. We can uh, consider, uh, given a point, we can consider a point that is not in the union of the image as close to the initial point as we want. And what we are going to show now is that the composition of F and pi, which is a map from M to R K minus one, which is still a CR because this map over here is uh, linear. Uh, this map is still gonna be an embedding. Okay. Okay, but we know that uh, proper injective immersions are embeddings. And uh, our map is always proper because the domain is compact. So we need to show that this composition is indeed an injective immersion. So let's go. Let's prove first that the composition is indeed, indeed, injective. Okay, suppose it's not. Our goal now is obtaining a contradiction. But uh, this implies that uh, there exist two points x and y in M, different points indeed, such that the image by the composition of X is equal to the image by the composition of Y, right? It's, uh, but uh, in order for uh, the projection by pi of FX being equal to the projection of uh, FY by P, since this is uh, the projection, the orthogonal projection into the orthogonal of the linear space generated by P, this happens if and only if Fx minus Fy is indeed in the linear subspace generated by P. Now, uh, let's point out that F is injective. So, in particular, the T is non-zero because since X is different than Y, F of X is different than F of Y, right? And then what we get 
is that if we apply g to the points x, y, 1 over t, okay, that's possible now because t is different than 0, we get 1 over t times fx minus fy, and that's p. And in particular, p belongs to the image of g. But that's impossible because of our choice of p. So in this way, we get a contradiction. So we know that f composed with pi is injective. Okay, now uh, let's show the other property is that uh, the composition is an immersion. If it's an immersion, then since it is already injective and proper, it's going to be an embedded. Okay. And again, suppose it's not. So uh, there exists a point X in uh, M such that the differential of the composition, let's call it pi, the composition at x is non-injective. But uh, this is a linear map. So if it's non-injective, there exists a non-zero vector in its kernel. Okay, so there exists u that is in the tangent space of m at x and it's not zero such that the differential of uh, f composed with pi at x applied to u is equal to zero. Now, in order to calculate this differential, let us use the chain rule, okay? So this is going to be the differential at the point f of x of pi applied to the differential of f at x applied to u, right? But uh, pi is a linear map. So the differential of pi, it's going to be itself. So we get p pi composed, p applied to this vector. The differential of f at x applied to u. Right. But the kernel of pi is exactly the vector subspace generated by p. Okay. And since f is an immersion and u is different than the zero vector, then this is not the zero vector. And so in particular, t is different than zero. Now, if we consider the image of uh, u over t by the map h, by definition, this is the differential of f at x applied to u over t, which is the differential of f at x applied to u over t, which is equal to p. And again, we get that p belongs to the image of h. But uh, uh, by, by choice, p does not belong to the image of h. So again, we get a contradiction.
Now, uh, completing the proof of the Whitney embedding theorem is not difficult because um, we have uh, an embedding f from m to our k. Of course, if k is less than 2m plus 1, it is very easy to build an embedding into r 2m plus 1. So we can suppose that k is uh, greater than 2m plus 1. And we can actually uh, consider a projection into our k minus 1, if k is greater than 2m plus 1, such that the composition is still an embedding. If k minus 1 is 2m plus 1, then it's over. We got the embedding we were looking for. It's still greater than 2m plus 1, we keep going. And we consider another projection, we apply the reduction result to this map and we get another projection so that the composition is still an embedding. If k minus 2 is equal to 2m plus 1, yeah, we are satisfied, otherwise we keep going. And so, in this way, we find a sequence of projections such that the composition of all of them with f is indeed an embedding. So, there exists an embedding from m, from the manifold, to r to m plus 1. Okay, and this ends the proof of the Whitney embedding theorem. We are going to make uh, some remarks. The first of them is that we use that M is compact in order to build an embedding from M into nuclear space. If you have a different way of, of building such an embedding, the remaining of the proof holds. You can reduce the dimension of the target space. Okay, that's uh, an interesting remark. Another interesting remark is that if we consider immersions, uh, we can immerse M into R to M. We don't need R to M plus one. And why is that? Here we defined two maps, G and H. And uh, if you check the proof, the condition that P does not belong to the image of uh, G is used to prove that the composition of F and Pi is indeed injected. That if our goal is actually finding immersions, we don't need immersions to be injected. So we don't need to consider this map. Uh, we need to consider H because indeed uh, what uh, we have when P does not belong to the image of H is that uh, the composition of F and Pi is an immersion. But what you see is that in order to reduce the dimension of the target space from K to K minus one, we just need K greater than 2M. So we, cap, we, we can apply this reduction of the dimension method till we get to R to the 2M. And that's the reason because uh, we get different dimensions of the target spaces in the case of immersions and in the case of embeddings. This completes the proof of the Whitney embedding theorem. But we will revisit this result later on because the hypothesis of compactness in the manifold is not necessary. And also, the result is true for C1 manifolds. Uh, in next lecture, we are going actually to interpret Whitney embedding theorem as an approximation theorem.
the discussion is going to be kind of informal because so far we didn't provide a topology in the space of differentiable maps. But even so, it's going to be interesting and it's going to give us an idea of the kind of topics that we are going to deal with in future lectures. Thank you for your attention.